you first started with Thrillist in 2005. What do you know now that you didn't know then? There's a great, great, great quote that someone said to me recently, which is, as someone who starts a business, you don't own your business, your business owns you. Mm -hmm. And it is so true. And like the sooner you realize that, the better off you're gonna be because you understand like what you're really getting yourself into. I'm Hartley Sawyer. I'm an actor, an activist, and a full-time work in progress. I am my business. I'm the CEO of me. Pursuing my goal has been a bigger challenge than I ever imagined. And taking risks, it doesn't always come easy for me. So I've come to New York to find how and where some of this city's most successful people find the courage, the strength to act, to roll the dice, make the leap, and make it happen. My education begins right now. This is Courageous Leapers. Calibrating priorities while your business grows takes as much courage as pursuing a new venture altogether. Ben Lehrer is mastering the art of evolution, but he's still having fun. So Ben, thank you for being here with me today. Of course. In this 10 years since you started Thrillist, has that evolved? Because you've gone through a lot of changes. Look, when I started the company, I'm like a little kid. I'm 23 years old. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go build this thing. I'm gonna sell it for a ton of money and then I'm never gonna work again. And that's what I'm thinking about. I'm, I'm like, thinking about, hey, like, isn't that nice? It's great to hear this from you today. And it's like, I'm thinking about, Think about you 10 years ago. Do you have advice for someone like that? My advice is gonna be the same for anybody, which is don't start a company unless you have to start a company. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean financially, I mean like, unless there is a business that you, every day you get out of bed and it's all you think about, every night it's the last thing you think about before you go to sleep, that's when you start something. I would advise people not to start something when they saw the movie The Social Network and were like, well, he's incredibly rich. What you think is gonna happen probably is not gonna happen. And if you come into it in any way other than like eyes wide open, that it's going to totally throw your life upside down, um, you're, it, it's gonna throw your life upside down. For me, the biggest change in the last few years here was I had a vision for what I wanted the product to be and I built a business to monetize that product and ultimately got more and more obsessed with the short-term focus on monetization and further and further away from spending the time that I wanted to spend developing the product that was in my head. It kept being the meetings that I was pumped about were meetings that were associated with design, that were associated with merchandising, that were associated with product, and the meetings that I didn't like, a lot of the HR stuff, Mm -hmm. I didn't like a lot of the finance. It didn't touch on your passion. It's stuff that I spend time on, but I've surrounded myself with people who are better at that stuff and more passionate about that stuff. You delegated. Well, yeah, and, and I, I hired you know leaders in these areas who are more passionate and better at that stuff, and I've been making changes in the business. And so 10 years in, it's like I'm reborn almost in coming to work every day because I'm more pumped about the products that we're building than ever before. And so I can do this for the rest of my life if we're building stuff that I'm passionate about. How do I not get short-circuited by the idea of, of taking a big risk? So that's that a was really a whole good different question, endeavor. which is how do you take risks when you have people who depend on you? Obviously, if you're, you know, there are situations where if you aren't successful to some degree, then like you actually won't be able to provide for your family or situations like that. And I'm, I'm lucky enough, you know, that, that I'm not in that situation. That's a whole different ball game and something that like I honestly couldn't speak to and it would be a joke for me to pretend that I, I understood that kind of pressure. Right. Like the pressure that I have in business is not just, it's not like a financial pressure, right. but it's an emo it's a pressure, it's about like me feeling like I'm, you know, a success. Not financially, but like emotionally. I should take my business seriously, but I shouldn't take life too seriously. That's the right way to think about it, which is, just enjoy yourself. Like life is short. Have fun, and if work's not fun, then change it. I mean, that would be the advice that like I give to entrepreneurs that I work with. Recently, a, 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 one of our companies came to me, and I just had to catch up with him. And you know, I, I looked at the business, and he told me what they were doing and what the plan was, and it was just like so apparent that he had lost any excitement for the biz. I'm like, look, you have no passion for what you're doing whatsoever. You have any other things that you've been thinking about? And he's like. Well, to be honest, there is this one sort of crazy weird project. And I said, take a week's vacation, clear your head, come back, and start 
tackling that other thing on your own and seeing if it becomes something that you're excited about. Do something that you are passionate about and excited about, go do it. Like, so you, you follow that fire. If you want to do it, go do it. In every aspect of your life, just go do it. I actually believe in weekends. Like, okay. Like, I legitimately disconnect because otherwise, like I've been doing this for 10 years, like I will explode at a certain point. It's just too much, it's too much stress, it's too much anxiety and I need that break and that separation and I'm able to get that only by actually forcing it. Yeah. That break is really necessary and it's what's allowed me to do this for 10 years and not burn out. You know, here, here's a, like a funny little anecdote. I was with my wife and another couple and one of the guys was talking about this challenge that they're having in business. And he talked to Emily about it and he said, things at work are terrible, it's the worst ever. And she goes, you ever, you're healthy? He's like, yeah. He's like, your family's okay? He's like, yeah. She's like, eh, you'll be fine. And I just thought that that was such an awesome way to look at things, that work isn't life or death. Like my best days and my worst days are here, but I'm trying to find ways to create less uh, volatility in the difference between the best and the worst day. What did I learn from Ben? If you don't run your business, your business runs you. Courage is knowing the path will change. But if you roll with the punches and go in with both eyes open, you can see change for what it really is, an opportunity to evolve. Serves its most amazing rewards for the bold, for the curious, for those with the confidence to pursue their dreams. Piscox Business Insurance. The courage to do more and be more. Piscox. Encourage courage.